Pterodactyl here, and I just want to inform you grass rats about some more stuff about this battery powered outdoor power equipment. And this is going to be interesting. But before we get into that, I need for you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, Tarot Fixes All, and our second channel, Tarot Fixes All Skits. And also go to our web store and buy some of our tarot apparel. Okay, so this is what I got for y'all, grass rats. There's a major outdoor power equipment company that is going around to the dealers and through their program. Now, if you don't know what a program is, a program is if you're a dealer for outdoor power equipment, for your following year, your following season, they come to your dealership and they have a program set up for you to buy new equipment for the following year. And that program consists of terms. If you don't know what the terms are, that's the terms of payment for the equipment you're gonna take. You don't have to pay for it right off the get. You get to pay for it over time. And your discounts on the outdoor power equipment. You know, how much profit you're gonna make when you sell a piece of equipment. So there's a major outdoor power equipment company that's going to their dealers and telling them that the minimum for their terms and discounts, they have to take $5,000 worth of battery powered equipment. And out of that $5,000 minimum, half of it has to be handheld, the other half has to be push mowers or, or walk behind mowers, whatever they have in battery or electric. And then they have different tiers. So the minimum being 5,000 you have to take, then it goes to 10,000, and I think there was like four tiers. And the, the more battery powered equipment you take, the better discount and better terms you get on the gas powered equipment that you're gonna buy. So I know what you're saying, well, well what if you don't wanna take any of that battery powered equipment, Terrell? What if you don't want none of that battery stuff? Well then, you get the worst terms and the worst discount on your outdoor power equipment, gas powered equipment for the year. So I don't want to name any names about who this company is, but their initials start with Toro. It's Toro. So do you understand how that works? They come to your dealership and they say, okay, what equipment do you want for the following year? but you gotta take a minimum of $5,000 in this battery stuff. And for that, you get this, these terms and these discounts. And then the more you take, the more you get. Now I can already see how this is gonna go because I've been in this business for over 40 years. When one starts to do it, the rest follow because they all watch what each other do. So that's how I see it happening. So again, I would just want to make clear, perfectly clear, that I don't have a dog in this fight. You know, I see the pros and cons for a lot of this stuff. The handheld stuff I understand, and, and the push mowers and that. I think the, the, the zero turns and, and the riding mowers is a little excessive. The cost is too high. But you know, this battery stuff, hey, you got these? You grass rats out there, you use these in your shop or in your home. It's got a battery in it. It's a tool, just like that weed eater and that battery chainsaw. Got one of these, drill. Got these things. All got batteries in them. Got this. Everybody's got one of these. There's millions, billions of these around the world. All got lithium batteries in it. All got rare earth materials being mined. That's why I said, you know, it, it's bigger than us. It's bigger than we think. We're not the uh, United States of the world. We're the United States of America. This stuff is going on all over the world. So we had some grass rat fans come in the other day from Ohio. And they're in the Marines, you know, out, uh, boats, Marine powered stuff. And they gave me this magazine. They said, here, Terrell, check this out. You want to get the veins popping out of your head? Look at this. 
battery powered boat motors. Right here. Oh, let me, I skipped over. Let's start here. I got a paper clip. So the first article we got, right here. This guy wrote this. Lithium ion batteries are coming of age. There's a whole big article here and then I highlighted the bottom part here, which says, which I thought was interesting. Because batteries are an evolving technology, we expect lithium ion batteries to be a growing part of marine electrical systems. With that, new questions will emerge. Yeah, a lot of new questions will emerge. And then I went through this a, a little bit deeper into here. Now we got this. Battery powered boat motors. This is a German company. Been around for 18 years already. They're like the leader in these battery powered boat motors. Anywhere from one horsepower to 80 horsepower equivalent. And uh, been in business 18 years, so obviously he's not having a problem selling any of them. Look at this, here's another one I found. Powerful ideas. Advances in battery technology are making generators less of a requirement on board. And then they show you a diagram. You can read that, this company got all these lithium ion power distribution setups with similar components. Here's a bank of them batteries. Look at all this technology, look at all this stuff. Look at all these electronics. All got rare earth materials in it. And again, this is the marine industry. Then we got the outdoor power equipment industry. We got the auto industry. This stuff is everywhere. It's everywhere. And then I found this. This is interesting too. Look at this. This is from 2002. 21 years ago. And look at what it says. Donald Francis's robots help with the yard work at his Martinsville, Indiana walnut farm. The computerized cutters pack onboard sensors. So these are Husqvarna battery powered robotic mowers back in 2002. And look what it says down here. Since the mowers don't use a gasoline powered engine, there are no emissions and blade noise is barely perceptible. So this stuff has been evolving for a long time. This just didn't crop up three years ago. This stuff has been around and being developed. It slowly leaches into your life. And before you know it, you got two choices. You either buy it or you don't buy it. That's how it's coming. Now, I got some more questions about this battery stuff. If you're a dealer, and if you're a dealer, you should ask these questions to your reps. If I take this battery stuff, and this battery stuff catches on fire and burns my shop down, are you going to pay to rebuild my shop? Or am I going to have to go through my insurance? Or is my insurance going to go up because I'm stocking all this battery stuff? Are you going to help me pay my higher insurance because I got a store full of this battery stuff that could possibly catch on fire? Think about that. That's something to think about and ask. What if you, you decide to take this stuff? I know a lot of dealers will sell Milwaukee tools. You know, they have Milwaukee tools that they sell. So part of that line, I'm sure those, those reps say, hey, why don't you take the chainsaws? Why don't you take the weed eaters and stuff? Okay, now you got all this battery stuff. What if it catches fire in the middle of the night, burns your shop down? Who's gonna pay for that? They gonna pay for that? You gonna pay for it? And then the next time you go to get insurance? No, we're not gonna give you insurance. You got all that battery, all that hazardous stuff in there. And about disposing of it, that's another good point. 
that I was reading in the comments from our other factory video. The disposal of it, yeah, okay. Let's build some recycling plants. Where are, where's the centers where I could take this stuff and drop it off where you live? Oh, it's, uh, it's 50 miles away. Oh, I'm not driving 50 miles away to recycle this battery. So what are you gonna do with it? You're gonna throw it in the garbage. It's never gonna make it to the recycling place. Like these batteries that we've had for years and years. You're not, throw, you're not supposed to throw these in the garbage. Everybody does. They throw them in the garbage. I'm guilty too. Not supposed to incinerate them. Not supposed to throw them in fires and stuff. I'm sure there's people that burn on their property. These things get burned up. There's a lot of this dinner to chew on. And again, I'm not for one side or the other because I've got all this stuff. This is a tool, just like that weed eater, that chainsaw, that lawnmower is a tool. It's the same tool. And if you feel so strongly about that, you know, then you might as well throw all this stuff in the garbage. If you're that strongly against it, don't have one of these. I don't want one of these. I had to get one of these during the pandemic. I've never had a cell phone until 2020. Can you believe that? Because of all this curbside pickup and stuff, I had to get a phone. You know what I'd like to do with this thing? I'd like to smash this thing. I hate this thing. You know what it's good for? Taking pictures. And that's about it. That's how I feel. Oh yeah, and here's another good point that was brought up. And I, and I strongly believe in this too. When the battery does take a crap and you go to get a new battery, oh, we don't make that battery anymore to fit that tool. We got the new and improved version here. So what do I do with this? It's perfectly good, it just needs a battery. And maybe for some reason you can't get it rebuilt, you know, because some places will rebuild these batteries. Like this one, it's got screws in it, could be taken apart and rebuilt. But there are some batteries that are sealed and you can't take them apart to rebuild them. So I see that coming too. Hey, I love this tool, it worked really good for five years, the battery took a crap, now I need a new battery, and you can't get the battery. I see that coming up too. And another thing, there's just no way around some of this equipment has to be gas powered. Like commercial uses, I hear this a lot. You know, there's farmers and stuff that have you know, miles and miles of fence line that they gotta trim. They're not gonna be able to use battery stuff for that. You gotta have gas power. There's just some things that have to be gas powered. There's just no way around it. You know, again, that's why I said the pros and cons. I think for the homeowner, the average homeowner with a small yard, that's, this battery stuff might be fine, but for bigger commercial applications, no, you're still going to have to have gas powered stuff. Oh, I got another story for you. That's right. I got another good story for you that I heard from my brother, Farrell. Yeah, he heard from another dealer. They had some battery powered zero turns that they took and they weren't able to sell them. So they were new old stock. They've been sitting around for a couple of years. They sold one so they pulled it out to get it ready the batteries were no good so they contacted the manufacturer the company i'm not going to say who it was it wasn't toro i'll let you know that it wasn't toro it was another major manufacturer they contacted them and said hey these batteries went bad are you going to warranty these batteries and they said no did you read the manual you have to maintain the batteries. The batteries, like y'all say, are a major cost of the piece of equipment. So whatever money he was gonna make on that unit, he lost it. Plus there's not a big profit margin on this stuff. Talk to your rep, see how much money you're gonna make on this battery stuff, pennies, when you go to sell it. You're not, making a, you're not gonna get rich selling it. Okay, that's just my opinion. You chew on this dinner. And again, in the comments, put what you think. 
It'd be interesting to see. And there's your battery dinner. <laughs>